Emojis have made their way into everyday life, but can they be used against you in court? Researchers say the little icons could have big legal consequences. To tell us more is Elizabeth Curley, co-author of the paper The Emoji Factor, and she's an adjunct professor at York University's Osgoode Hall Law School. Good morning. Welcome to our program. Glad to be here. So this is a pretty catchy headline. What sort of challenges do these emojis pose for the courts? Because they seem pretty innocent. They do, don't they? And they seem very attractive to people to use, very convenient, funny, cute. But sometimes they can um, create fear in the recipient that they are being threatened or that they're going to be killed. And so those kinds of messages, messages end up in the courts. And the judges are scratching their head. Sometimes they can call on what knowledge they have to interpret emoji, but a lot of times it's very difficult to try to find criminal intent in uh, a mixture of text and emoji. Can you give so us that's our challenge? Can you give us an example of, of an emoji that can be interpreted in different ways? I think a lot of us just use them, but we don't really know if there's a true definition for them. So give us some examples, please. Yeah, so there's, there are two faces. Uh, one is a winky face with one eye winking. The other one is a tongue out face, mm -hmm. tongue on the side mm -hmm. of the mouth. We're not really sure what those mean. And they've uh, been used in different contexts. So sometimes they're what we call a modifier and they simply reduce the impact of the message. And so, for example, with a dating couple who've never really met each other, uh, use of a winky face might mean, well, I'd like to meet you face to face, but maybe not right now. But it might also be a danger signal. It might mean uh, that I'm uh, it's sort of creepy. It's a creepy factor. And that, in fact, uh, the one of the parties wants to uh, actually stalk or go after the other person. So that's an example of how we're, we need to know how emoji are contributing to a conversation. So how do we get around this? Do we need Very clear definitions? Question. I think what we need to do is bring in people who deal with language all the time, linguists, um, people who deal with computer, human computer interaction. We need uh, people who deal with symbology, icons, and so on, as well as people in the legal field to take a look at how these can be interpreted in different contexts and when used within different social groups. So your 14-year-old friend or daughter who is texting or sexting with one of their friends might be using a completely different catalog of emoji than someone who's 30 and looking into buying a piece of property and has sent an emoji simply to say, I'm, I'm, e I'm eager, I'm interested. Um, or just, uh, I don't know, sometimes they just, they're, they're what we call um, phatic statements. It's just sort of passing time. You know, we're not really saying anything with the emoji. So we need to sort all this out and do you think we need even, experts. Do you think that even the creators of emojis are aware of this, that there could be many interpretations on one little winky face, for example? I doubt it because mm -hmm. it, it depends. I, I, I would doubt it though, because a lot of emoji are, are added to texts that are sent either when we're venting, when we're angry, when we're in a hurry. Uh, and they are so convenient to grab rather than trying to text out uh, words. But other times um, they're used to change or give nuance to a message. Mm -hmm. And I, so sometimes, yes, the sender is very aware of what they're doing. It's the recipient we have to think about. Do they okay. feel in danger? Do they feel uh, threatened, harassed, or defamed? Um, that's what we need to look into. Okay, fascinating uh, stuff. Elizabeth Curley, co-author of the paper, The Emoji Factor. Appreciate you being with us.